Okay, let's begin. Let's pray. My God in heaven, please bless this service that the Holy Spirit speak through me today. And may the people watching uh, and the word be passed around the world for your glory, not ours. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. How are you? It's good to see you. Okay. So the sermon today is caring for the people that are on your side. So today you're going to see two different types of people. Some that, that pretend to be on your side and some that are really, really against you but close to you. So this is a lesson for life. Okay? Don't worry about what's said. Morning, brother. Uh, so don't worry about what's said now on the screen. Okay? We're going to go through that later. We're going to read it out, but we're going to get into it later. Okay? So the king said to Ittai the, uh, the, the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? So the king's in trouble. Why are you running with us? Okay? Return to your place and abide with the king. You've got a safe spot there. Okay? For you're a stranger and also an exile. Where is thou... Canis, but yesterday, we've only just met you. Should I this day make you go up and down with us? This is David talking to this guy who's on his side. Sing, I go whither I may. Return thou. Take back thy brethren. Go back to your brothers and sisters. Mercy and truth be with thee. And the man it I says to David, as the Lord liveth and as... My Lord the King liveth. Surely in what place my Lord the King shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. He stays loyal to David, even though David's in trouble. Even though it could cost him his life. Even though his brothers and sisters are back there. Let's see how this began. Okay. So Joab, now Joab is one of my heroes in the Bible, but, you know, there's no films about him again. Okay, one day if I get money, I'll make a film about him. Okay, so Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was toward uh, Absalom. Now, sometimes you've argued with someone in your life. Maybe it's your brother, sister, maybe it's, you know, your father your mother, something like that. And somebody decides that you two should get back together because that's the Christian thing. Is that also, is that always a good thing though? Let's find out. Okay, so what's happened? One of the king's sons is a guy called Absalom, one of David's sons. And he's killed the other son. Now, the, the guy that he killed was a very bad person, so he did the right thing, Absalom. Okay? But David doesn't want to talk to him anymore. Okay? So he doesn't, he's banished him from the kingdom. Now, Joab has said, you know, I've said, David, you have to talk to your son again. So he manipulates the situation of thinking he's helping him. Okay? So... Let's see where, where this goes. Uh, Joab sent her to Koa and fetched thence a wise woman and said to her, I pray thee, feign thyself to be a mourner. Pretend to be a woman who's lost her family. Okay, so he's paid money by deceit, deception, Joab, thinking he's doing the right thing. Okay. I'm telling you this because maybe you've argued with a friend and another friend wants to get you back together with that friend. Okay, which will end in the disaster that you're going to see now. Okay. <laughs> um, because sometimes, you know, I'll, I've met people that have come to me, they've said to me, my mother, mother now, you don't really get closer than that, do you? My mother did all these evil things to me. Shall I still talk to her? 
She wants to contact me now. I said, pray for it and see where God leads you. And I said the most important question, did that person repent? It's the most important thing. Let's see where this goes. Okay. So let's get some of So Job says, you find yourself to be a mourner. Put on mourning of power and anoint myself with oil. Be as a woman that has a long time mourned from the dead. Okay. Pretend to be upset about losing someone. Okay, so there's a big long story, and then she twists the story at the end and says, See, you're talking about you, David. If you won't take your own son back, how can I take mine back? So they've manipulated this. She's Joab's manipulated the situation to be the good guy. See, I've got you and your son back together. See where this goes. Okay, to fetch about this form of speech. Uh, so David's clocked. He's figured it out. Oh, Joab sent you to do this. Okay. Thy servant Joab has done this thing, and my Lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. Okay. So the king said to Joab, okay, I've done this thing. I've, I've accepted my son back. Bring the man Absalom again. And the king said, let him turn to I don't want to see his face anymore. I don't want to see him. Okay? So, let's go to the next one, which is going to be a little bit weird. Now, have you ever seen an ugly James Bond? No. Right? Because in Hollywood, the good guy is always good looking. I'm so good looking, I'm James Bond, I'm the good guy, and good guys are good looking. Bad guy scars, scars everywhere, horrible person, ah, you know. So it's easy to see the bad guy and the good guy. Well, reality works a little bit differently, okay. In the Bible, uh, Lucifer's described as, you know, extremely beautiful, whatever it was, they were called him, and, you know, you were the singer in heaven and stuff like this. Now, this has created a thing in people's minds that they trust good-looking people and think ugly people are all evil. <laughs> okay? It doesn't work like that in real life. It's the other way around. Okay? Let's see how this goes. But in all Israel, there was none so much praise as Absalom for his beauty. From the sole of his foot, even to the crown of the head, there was no blemish in him. No scar, right? <laughs> this bad guy's got scars, so he can't be a bad guy. Let's see where this goes. And when he pulled his head, pulled is an old word, you know, cut your hair. That's what it means. When he pulled his head, Whereas every man's years end that he pulled it because his hair was heavy on him. So he looks like Fabio. You know, he's, he's totally good looking, this guy. Totally charismatic, this Absalom. Better looking than David. He's the fairest man in the land. Okay. He weighed the hair of his head, 200 shekels. I put the weight in just because it's me and I'm, I get too deep into this stuff. Okay, so his hair weighed two kilos, whatever that weighs. Okay. Then Joab arose and came to Absalom to his house and says to him, So what has Absalom done? This good looking Fabio guy. He set Joab's fields on fire because he won't let him see the king. So this is the start of something bad. You know where this is going. Okay? Sometimes the people that are in your life are out of your life by the hand of God. Because God helped you against an evil person. But people don't see that. All they see is forgive and love and forgive and love. It's not true. God puts down his hand to save you from a bad relationship. To save you from an evil friend. This is the hand of God. If you try to manipulate that situation, you will end up doing the harm that you're about to see. Okay, so this guy just burned down his fields. And Absalom, behold, I sent to you, saying, come hither. So Joab went to all this effort to reunite. Morning, brother. 
This is the first time the men are outnumbering the women in the church. What's going on? What's happening today? Never seen this. <laughs> Must be a man's kind of sermon, you know. Okay, okay so uh, come here. I told you to come here and you didn't come here, so I set your fields on fire. I bet right now Joab's regretting bringing him back in the city, no? He's regretting it. Who's that guy parking there? Deal with that. Someone, uh, it's someone outside the church. Okay. Okay, uh, right. Therefore, I come for it. it has been good for me to be near still. So this guy is really ungrateful. You bank. Is it? I'll leave her there. <laughs> so she can park outside the church whenever she wants. Okay. So it's been good for me to be there. So he's ungrateful. Joab has saved this guy for no reason and brought him back with a king. And what's happened? Morning. Morning. Morning, brothers. Morning. Okay, so. Sorry about all the interruptions. People that are watching. Okay. Now let me see the king's face. If there's any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So sometimes you'll see your friend might lie to you in this way. He wants you to feel good. I would lose my life for this righteous situation. I would die for you. I would be careful with people that say that to you. To get your attention, to make you their friend, it's false. This man's false. And slowly he's worming his way back. Let's see where this goes. Morning. We're going to need some more chairs. How many people we've got now? Okay. So. God bless that little baby. No, you can't steal babies. The police can't. <laughs> God bless that miracle child that wasn't going to be born and came. The power of prayer is a miracle right there. <laughs> okay. So, we got to get back to the sermon. Brothers and sisters, take water from there, please. Take water for yourselves. I know it's hot. Okay. So, this evil person approaches in this way, okay? So, it doesn't mean if someone's talking to you nicely and pretends to be all this, that they're your friend, okay? So, he bows his face before the king, and, he, and the king kissed him. So, he's getting in with his father, David. So, and it came to pass after this. So, while he's getting in with his father, he has a secret plan. To overthrow his father. And it came to pass after this. That Absalom prepared his chariots and horses. And 50 men to run before him. He did all this. All this big act. So that he could do something bad to his father. He starts amassing an army against David. Let's go to the next one please. Hello, God bless you, sister, and God bless little Janet. That's okay. That's okay. You're very, very welcome. Okay. Now, when someone's plotting and scheming, can somebody get her a water, please? Okay. When someone's plotting and scheming, what do they do? It says he rose up early. And what's he doing here? Well, if your enemy's a bad guy, he's been plotting and scheming all night. The people against you, all of you. Remember, Jesus said that we would be hated. So they're plotting. He gets up early. He stands by the gate. He starts to manipulate people against David, the king. So let's see what happens with King David. Okay. And it was so that when any man had a controversy, came to the king for judgment, Absalom called him and said, What city are you? He said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. Go to the next one, please. 
And Absalom said to him, see no matters are good and right. So he's winning the people over to him. Okay? There is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. He's making his father David the king look bad. It's just so awful. Then he says, oh, that I were made judge in the land. If only I was king. Okay? Then every man which had any suit or cause might come to me and I would do him justice. So you can see how this man is manipulating the people. Now, if you do this for years and years and years, you will get people on your side. Go to the next one. When any man comes to him, he put on his... So this man standing at the gate, anyone that comes in sees Absalom, and he plots and he schemes. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. This is what's happened. Now, brother, tell me your name. You, yes. Samuel. Samuel. We're talking Samuel. You're not joking, are you? Okay, then. Okay, Samuel, we're talking about Samuel today. Now, if I'm against you, and I'm like Absalom, I'm going to go to your friends, and I'm going to get them to turn on you. I'm going to show them that I'm a good man, and I'm going to buy them drinks and get all these things, because that's what evil people do. They don't want to get you. They want to get everyone against you as well. And it may take years, but this is what people do. There is a way out. Okay. So it came to pass that after 40 years of doing this, this guy was patient. And that's what people are. Sometimes evil people do that. They're very, very patient. They don't lose their temper. They don't make mistakes. They plot. They scheme. These are people in governments, politicians, people like that. This, they, they do things like this. Okay. So Absalom says to the king, let me go and I'll pray you. Okay. Let me fulfill my vow to God. So he pretended to be a good guy to his dad. Let me go. What he's actually going to do is form an army to fight David, King David. And this is what he's doing. Okay. So Absalom sent. Now this is a politician. Okay. In all the countries that we've come from and been to, you will find these types of men, scheming men, very clever men, advisors. And that's what we've got here. Absalom sent for Ahitophel, the Gilonite, David's counsellor. So he's taken one of David's trusted friends and brought him over to his side. Okay? But even from oh, you off. Okay. And the conspiracy was... Okay, but the people increased continue with Absalom. Let's go to the next one. Now it's too late. Because if you allow an evil person back into your life without them repenting, there's a reason I'm saying this. Okay. What's happened is there's a trap set for David, set to kill him. Okay? All of Israel is now against David, Judah. This is where it's going. Okay? Arise, let us flee, David says. He realizes this is a losing situation. He realizes the danger he's in. Arise, let us flee, for we shall not escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us. And smite the city with the edge of the sword. David, King David, has won countless battles, but he's scared to fight against his son. Did he believe that God wasn't with him? Do we believe that God isn't with us? Because we can have this doubt, we can feel this fear. This is one of the greatest warriors of all time. And sometimes it's like that. Now I remember working. In the club, when I was a very, very young, much younger, but I'm not old, okay? Now I remember 
I was in fights with eight people. I was in fights. I always came out okay. God was with me. Not because I was tough. God was with me. But there was one night when a little guy said something to me. And for the rest of the night, I was terrified like this. It happens. For some reason, at some point, so many wars, your nerve goes sometimes. And this is what happens. I never forget that night. I said to him, the, the, the head bouncer says to me, what's going on? I said to him, I'm not in any danger, but for some reason, I'm sure. He says to me, by being in high tension all the time, the time where there's no danger, you'll, it'll all come back to you. And then this is what it was like. So this is what's happened to David. Countless wars. And David's scared of his own son. Okay. Then he says to this man, okay, why are you going with us? Okay, run as well. Okay, like we said at the beginning, because you're a stranger, an exile. But here's the thing. Who's on David's side? This complete strange guy that he's met once. Where is thou camest but yesterday? I only just met you. And the guy will not leave his side. And this is some of the friends you meet. And some of the people you meet in your life. They will stick closer to you than your family. The Bible says, uh, there's a, a verse that says, a friend can be closer to you than a brother. And it's true. Here we have a son who's turning against David. But a complete stranger he's met once that will die by his side. Okay, let's go to the next one. And one told David, saying, Ahitophel is among the conspirators. And David said, now David's got really scared because this is an advisor. Okay? Lord, he does the right thing. Something that Absalom didn't do. Okay? He does the first thing that all of us should do. He seeks God first. When any problem comes up, step one, pray. It doesn't matter what that problem is, okay? There is no problem if God puts his hand on it, okay? Oh Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahitopel into foolishness, okay? And it came to pass when David was come to the top of the man where he worshipped God, behold, who shine? Now this guy's a, a friend of David, an actual true guy. He came to meet him with his coat, rent, and earth upon his head. So people are coming to David that are closer to him than his own son and sticking by him. Okay? So remember the prayer. Turn the counsel into foolishness. Let's go. Okay. You're going to be a burden to me, this man Hushai. But if you go back to the city and say to Absalom, I'll be your servant... Okay, then you can defeat the council of Ahitophel. Tell, don't tell this evil king that you're his friend. And tell him to do the opposite of the right thing and save us. Go and be a spy for me. Okay, so David's asked his friend to be a spy. Let's go to the next one. Now, I want you to get this bit as it hit me when I was writing this. Okay, I didn't write the Bible, I'm just saying when I was copying and pasting for this presentation. Okay. So was all the council of Ahithophel, the, the advisor, both with David and Absalom. Now, what do I mean? If you go to a solicitor, okay. And, you know, Zena's taking me to court. Zena doesn't like me, she's taking me to court. Okay? The solicitor doesn't care about right or wrong or anything like that. Whoever's paying him, <laughs> he works for him. You know? And if I say to the solicitor, I'll pay you double what she's paying you, and suddenly gives me advice against her. This is what's happened. And this is what's happening with the people in your life. Beware. People in your life can swap sides. People around you can swap sides. And that's what's happening here. David and Absalom, whoever's paying me, I'll give them really good advice. Now, this guy is a top expert. That's why David is scared. He's a military advisor. 
He's like a general. Okay? Now, he gives Absalom, the bad guy, the best military advice he could have given. And it is a really good idea. He could have killed King David like that if he followed, if Absalom listened to this military advisor. He said, let me choose 12,000 men. I will arise and pursue after David. And I'll come on him while he's weary. Best time to strike. And we can, I'll make him afraid. And all the people with him shall flee. And I will smite the king only. If I just kill David, you get his troops as well. He's a conniving, good military advisor. If we had this, we wouldn't have many problems in Cyprus. But this is what I'm saying. Okay? This is what's going to happen. The people that are in your life will work for whoever gives them the most. The person that you work with will sell you out if he thinks he's going to take your job. If he sees you as a threat to him, especially here in Cyprus, this has happened to me many times. They looked at my CV and they said, well, 12 computer diplomas. Let's put that in the shredder. This guy's going to take my job. The only time I got a job was when I reduced my CV and said I know a little bit about computers. Then the job started coming in. I wasn't a threat to anyone anymore. So be careful of these people that are around you. Okay? So let's go. Okay. Now the spy that David sent, okay, then said Absalom, call now Hushai, okay? So he's pretending to be his friend. Call now, uh, uh, you know, David's other, other advisor, okay? And David's friend says to him, don't listen to this military expert, okay? Because he's on David's side. Don't listen to him. If he did, David would have been dead. Okay, let's go to the next one. Paul said to Shane, knowing thy father and his men, they be mighty men. David and his army, and it was true, they were lethal. If you're fighting, if you're a special, you're in the military, right? If you're fighting constantly for years and years in the military, you get the hang of it, right? You become a top soldier, elite. If you've won battle after battle after battle, you've learned a lot. And so he's telling the truth. They'd be chafed in their minds. They're um, angry, irritated in their minds, like a, a, a bear robbed of her whelps. Now, have any of you seen on TV a bear? And the guy goes in the woods and he's photographing the bear. Yeah. Photographs. He doesn't realize the mum comes charging out because she thinks you're attacking the child. This is what's happening here. They'd be chafed in their minds as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. And thy father is a man of war and will not lodge with a people. So you can see the spy here is doing his damage. We're coming to the end now. Okay? And Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the council of Hushai is better than the council of... So they're all listening to David's spy. Okay? For the Lord had appointed... Remember, the one person that went to God first with his problem. Okay? The Lord appointed to defeat the good counsel of Adipil to the intent that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Let's go to the next one. David has escaped. We're coming to the end now. David has come back with an army, thanks to that one guy who was on his side. Okay? David numbered the people that were with him, set captains of thousands, captains of hundreds with him. He's got his full force now, and they're elite fighting men. The king commanded Joab and Abishai saying, now here's where the sermon changes message. Because if you feel sorry for evil people, this will happen to you. Okay? Be careful not to pity the wrong people. 
If you see a guy being punished by God, leave him. If that guy's being punished because God's righteous, God doesn't punish you know people that don't deserve it. Okay, the king commanded Joab and Abishai said, deal gently for my sake with the young man, even Absalom. David's mistake. And all the people heard when the kid gave captains charge concerning Absalom. Well, hang on a minute. This guy, all these people around you, David, they're loyal to you. Maybe you've got friends that are loyal to you. They stick by your side during bad times. When all things are going against you, when your life's in danger, that's when you know your friends. I have such friends. Some of those people are here today. <laughs> okay? These are the people. Remember these people because you need to care for them. They're on your side. Okay? And it doesn't matter if it's family or not. We've got family bond here against friend bond. Okay? So, let's go to the next one. Where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David, there was a great slaughter that day of 20,000 men. For the battle was scattered all over the country, and the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. There was a battle in the wood. Now, all of this situation could have been avoided if Joab had them tried to reconcile two people together that shouldn't have been reconciled together. So if someone's out of your life, don't mourn about it. If you think that you're going to help someone by getting them together with someone else, you're not. Maybe that's really supposed to happen. Blessed are the peacemakers, yes. But beware, there's also the hand of God. Sometimes God does stuff... For a very big reason. And this is one of those reasons. So 20,000 men have died. All because of one mistake. And one person. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Absalom met the servants of David. Now we see the hand of God. Absalom rode upon a mule. And the mule went under a thick boughs of a great oak. And his head got caught. In the oak. So he's riding. And his head's stuck in a tree. <laughs> He was a tall guy, handsome guy, yeah. But that tallness got him caught, okay, in a tree. So this is the hand of God. It doesn't get better than this, okay? If God does this to your enemy, laugh at him and then, you know. The head was caught and he was taken up between the heaven and earth and the mule went away. So he's hanging there. And a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. Okay. Now, if he saw the enemy of David hanged in an oak, what should he have done? I heard someone speak. Uh, A1. B, he should have finished him off. Okay. Now, Joab said to the man that told him, Behold, you saw him. Okay. Why didn't you smite him there to the ground? I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a girdle. It's like seeing Hitler hanging in a tree, okay? And you've got a chance to end the Second World War and you don't do it. You just run off and tell someone, see, look over there. This is... Sometimes, church, God will deliver your enemies to you. Don't take pity on them because you think that's the Christian thing to do. Pity on them if they repent, yes. But pity on evil will get you into trouble. And that's what today's sermon's about. Because sometimes you can be, I remember I was in a relationship once, and it was a nightmare, and I had to get out of it. But she came back, and she kept calling me, and I thought, okay, then let's do this. And then she went to my parents, then she went, let's get back, you know. What happened? It was a complete disaster. The same as this is a disaster. Sometimes uh, someone doesn't like the sermon. Okay. Why didn't you smite him? And the man said to Joab, though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver. I should want milk. Fair enough. Okay. Though I should receive it, yet I would not pull. pull Put forth my hand against the king's son, 
For in our hearing the king charged ye and Abish, uh, Abishai and Ittai, saying, Beware that no one touch the young man Absalom. We're going to go to the next one, then I'm going to explain this. Boab said, I may not tarry thus with thee. Church, have you ever seen one of those horror films where the bad guy, they hit the bad guy, he goes to the floor and they turn around and they start talking to the person and the bad guy is getting up in the background and you're going, give him him. That's what's happening here. That's what's happening here. I've got no time to talk to someone like you, he's saying. Okay? So he runs off. Now, I need to ask the church a question now. Who is doing the right thing? The guy who wouldn't kill the bad guy, or Joab, who took, he says he took three darts in his hand and thrust them through the heart of Absalom. Darts in these days were about a foot long. Okay? And ten young men that bear Joab's armor compassed the back and smote Absalom and slew him. So Joab's not messing around. He sees evil and he attacks. The other guy walks off because the king gave a command. But if the king gives a command, it doesn't mean it's a righteous command. If a policeman tells you to do something, I could get in trouble for preaching this, but if it's an unrighteous thing, don't follow it. If your boss tells you to do something. How many of those Nazis were saying we were just following orders? You gas people. Well, that was, we were just following orders. Do you accept that? I don't. It's pure evil. And that's what's happening here. Okay? So, Joab's doing the right thing. Okay? So the news has got back to David. Okay? Okay. And behold, Cushy came, and Cushy said, Tidings, my lord and king, the Lord has avenged thee this day of them that rose up against thee. Okay? 20,000 people died, men of your army. It was, we've had a great victory today. Look, King David, this is a great, great thing that's happened. Let's go to the next one. The king said to Cushy, is the young man Absalom safe? Shouldn't you be caring more about your own troops, David, that fought for you? What about your servants? What about your army? What about the spy that you sent in there to risk his life for you? Is the young man Absalom safe? Cushy said, the enemies of my lord, the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that as that young man is. Okay. <laughs> right. So, uh, the enemy here was a member of David's family. Okay. Can the enemy in your life be a member of your family? I'm not trying to turn people against families here. I'm just saying, you need to keep your eyes open, <laughs> okay, for what's right and wrong in this situation, okay? He shouldn't be caring about the, uh, the, his enemies. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber of the gate and wept. And as he went, thus he said, Oh, my son, Absalom, my son, my son... I would God that I died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. Does this sound ridiculous or not? Understandable. Yeah. Maybe when I become a parent, I'll understand. At the moment, I think, I just want to hit him with a baseball bat. This, for me, is unrighteous to mourn about those people because there were other sons and daughters that were lost because of this. But okay. Uh, understandable as a parent, you say. 
Not righteous, okay. Something like that. I know... Um, well, let's read this, and then we'll see where this goes. The lesson for today is this. And the victory that day was turned into mourning. See, it's a great victory. If you're fighting and 20,000 people died, I don't know how many people were in that battle, but there's a lot of people. Maybe 100,000. We don't know. We don't know. I don't even want to say. Okay? Because I don't want to add to the Bible. Okay? Whatever it says. 20,000 people died is what we know. Okay? Victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people. You depressed everyone, David. You made everyone depressed. You felt sorry for evil people. But the people heard say had it. That day had a king was grieved for his son, but they just fought for you. It's the same as people in your life. You're going to be angry with me. Why? Because I told you something you didn't want to hear. And it was against people that you might love. Okay? But it was a righteous thing to do. If you hate me for it, that's the way it is. The people get them by stealth that day to the city. Morning, my sister. Okay? So, uh, give this lady a seat, please. We need to give this lady a seat. Oh, she's found a seat. Okay. So, what's happened now? Victory's turned into mourning. He has depressed his own people, okay? And his people are going by stealth. You know, instead of cheering for this great victory, people are being ashamed and steal away as people that flee in the battle. Now, be happy. If God has given you a great victory, be happy for that. Don't be happy. For, don't be sad for your enemies. If God has helped you, you're insulting God. Somebody give the lady a drink, please. Yeah, I'll do a glass of water. Okay. Now, Joab came to the house of the king and said, Now, this is how a friend will speak to you. Okay? Thou hast shamed this day the faces of thy servants which this day have saved thy life. They saved your life, David. And the lives of the sons, daughters, the lives of your wives, and the lives of your concubines. David, what have you done? You've depressed all the people that have saved you. Have you ever done that? Have you ever called someone? Has somebody ever called you? You've got some, how are you doing? Oh, you know. Eventually, you don't want to ask them how they're doing. <laughs> Why? There are brave people. I met a girl, and she was very, very, uh, she, she told us the things, that, and she was so brave and so laughing about the problems and the things that had happened to her. I sat back and I thought, the problems in my life that I moan about, and this girl is, is greeting them in a happy way. I'll never forget that girl's face. She laughed about but this guy, he's, he's, he's depressed about a great victory. Let's go to the next one. What was his mistake? And let's remember this. In thou lovest thine enemies and hated your friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither princes nor servant. For this day I perceived that if Absalom had lived and we all died, then it had pleased thee well. So... Who is your enemy? Your enemy can be anyone. The people that save you from your enemy don't have to be family. They can be people that you met for one day. They can be people that you have only met in a year. They can be people that show you the evil that you're in. Maybe you're in a, a terrible church and someone you've just met says, pull out of there. Maybe you're in a, a, a bad work environment and your friend tells you to, but I work with my father. Get out of that situation if it's bad for you. Don't always think that your family is, you know, the best thing and their advice is always godly. It's not. Don't think that the people you've just met or you hardly speak to are your enemies. 
Open the door so she can hear, please. I don't care if she's outside. That's it. Just let her hear. It's okay. It's okay. Whatever makes you comfortable, don't worry. Okay. So let's go to the next one. So we come. We've come to the end now, people. Okay. <laughs> Okay, now therefore arise, go forth and speak comfortably to thy servants. For I swear by the Lord that if thou go not forth, and you t and there will not tarry with thee this night, there will not uh, tarry one with thee this night. Everyone's going to leave you, David. Everyone in your kingdom is going to leave you. We've had enough of you moping around over an evil guy. And that will be worse to you than all the evil that befell you from your youth until now. Then the king arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto the people, saying, Behold, the king does sit in the gate. You see, the people need the king. They need their leadership. They need that. A church will go down, the, down like this if the leader becomes corrupt, if he uses a bad Bible, one of these new Catholic ones or whatever. If the person becomes corrupted, all the people lose the leader. And then all the people go down afterwards. It was bad leadership that's responsible for a lot of the problems in the world. There's no godly leaders, proper godly leaders. Okay? So, uh, for Israel had fled away, we went, okay, so, if the people are in your life, okay, care for them. Care for the people that are in your life, that love you, that are on your side. Keep your eyes open for the people that, you might have known them 20 years, but you don't really know them. Okay? It's not, oh, I've known this guy all these, do you really know him? Do you really know that person? If somebody, let's go back to that. <laughs> you know, the one with James Pond, okay? <laughs> don't think that everyone who has a nice face is a good person, okay? It's not true, okay? Trust me, in real life, bad people are often the good-looking ones, okay? That's how it is. This is how life is. It's a strange fact, but sometimes you can judge people by the way their appearances, and Jesus warned us about this. Don't look at, upon their appearance. Look upon the inward parts. What, what are they about? Look at their fruits. What sort of things do they do? Do they do good things or bad things? I want to know about this thing. Now, from the moment that that guy burned down his field, you should have known that he was a bad guy. If the king has banished someone, it might be for a reason. If somebody doesn't want to talk, to their mother or father. There might be a reason that we don't know about. Don't, as Christians, think you're doing the Christian thing and force them back or you'll have this disaster. Okay? It's a situation where... Um, right. Let's go to the first slide. Okay? And then we'll end there. Church, I'm going to do a quick prayer, and I want the Spirit of God to bring judgment and make everybody here wise to understand the good people and the bad people. Blood, no blood, family, no family. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, that guy's adopted. Well, that, so is Jesus. <laughs> they forget that. The real parents definitely wanted him. I have seen parents that don't actually want their kids. I've seen things like this. So 
We're going to use our righteous judgment today. And the first thing we'll do is what David did. And we'll pray to God. Let's pray. My Heavenly Father, I pray that the message today gives wisdom. I pray that everybody here cares for the people that care about them. They don't shout at them when they give them good advice. I pray that their eyes are open, that they become, as you said, as wise as the serpents, as clever as the evil people trying to overcome them. I pray that the people out there see the signs early and the time to get people out of their lives, the time to rent. I also pray that if someone genuinely repents, that we find forgiveness for that person in our hearts. I pray that we don't respect people because they're older or younger than us, but that they're actually on our side. And I ask this wisdom and power to come through this church, to everyone listening, and to those that will never even see this video. I pray for them to, to get this message. In Jesus' name, I'm I need two brothers uh, for the communion. And uh, we're going to do communion today. We do it once a month. I'm thinking of doing it once a week. Uh, brother, uh, that's it. Take one each and give them out to the church, please. Lucky you put extra. Yeah. That's faith. Yes, please, brother. Uh, you just give everyone a communion. Just go around, make sure everyone's got one. If she can't hold it, if she can't hold it, hold it for her, mum. Yeah? Make sure. <laughs> it's so small, isn't it? It's so small. <laughs> and God bless that child forever. Thank you. It's okay. Don't worry. It's okay. Our Lord Jesus Christ gave his life to forgive our sins, to give us eternal life, a chance at it after repentance. Brothers and sisters, Lord, forgive our sins. We remember you and the sacrifice you made for us. He took the bread and he broke it. He says, this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, he took the cup. It's okay, don't worry. He took the cup and he gave thanks. He says, this is my blood, the, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. A deal that will never be broken by God to give you eternal life. And we'll see all of you in heaven one day. Great is my God. Do this in remembrance of me each time you drink it. It's okay. It's okay, no, 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 it's okay. Who's that? Okay. I thank God that there's so many people that we run out. I thank God for this. It's not bad things, it's a fantastic thing. So let's let's give thanks for that as well. Okay. 
I'm going to need a brother to close us in prayer. Okay, I was going to ask one of the new guys, but okay. Are they baptized, brother? Yes. Loud. Loud. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Oh, uh, just one minute. For those watching, just please just reach out to us and uh, hopefully we'll lead you to Jesus. We are going peace to love and serve God and keep our eyes open in our life for the people we should care about. God bless you all.